So I'm running a new edition of the Monsters Aerodin deck that I was running before. <clears throat> this one in particular, the, the previous one was from Gwendolyn. This one is actually a copy or very nearly a copy of Freddy Babes' deck from, I believe it's Freddy Babes. His deck from uh, Gwent Slam, or not Gwent Slam, the Gwent whatever open tournament. That fairly generic name. <laughs> it's uh, I think it's a lot better. I, actually, I think it's... If we were just to be exaggerating here, I would say this is this deck is like twice as good. I feel like I feel like my wins are so much more stable and like focused. Before you had like all these harpies and you had all these these ekimaras and it just felt really weird. The only like weak park, uh, there's two instances two instances I'd think about changing this deck. And the first one I think I am going to change for just like inevitably is the Sly Lizard. Uh, I'm not saying it's a bad card actually it's a fantastic card i love this card uh but the problem is that there's too many of this card in this deck there's actually three of them i think there should be maybe two tops i think you could be fine with just even one even but what to replace it with is a little bit more difficult of a question uh, i was hoping weather would take over a little bit more that i could be very happy and just putting in like a griffin or something like that or an art griffin or whatever it's called <laughs> but that's not the case so it, it's gonna wait and the other second thing is this igni Igni is a really fantastic card, especially against very high tempo uh, opponents. And as you'll see here in the next couple of days, it saved me and won me quite a few games just by itself. So it's a really strong card. But at the same time, I feel like the 25 strength total is really punishing sometimes. If you cannot get that 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 value going on this five strength gold, you know what you just it's a dead card, right? Like uh, so it can be game winning. It can be difficult to use. Eh, I mean, it's I, if I were to replace it, it'd be something with like. Uh, not necessarily woodland spirit, but just a more reliable gold card. Uh, the the margin of variance is a little bit too high on that. But anyway, otherwise the other big change of this deck is using uh, crones. If you don't know what crones are, the crones are the cards that will pull one crone out and then it'll drag the other two out from the deck. Just to comment on this game real quick, this game is more or less just background filler while I talk about this cool deck that I'm playing now. Uh, basically, I'm just playing him against the typical spell Tal. I placed down some weather. He's got he's far too far too slow. I made sure to use a high tempo option with my leader to get my second hound out using the navigator. This is a really nice high tempo play. It, it kind of reminds me of King Bran getting rid of the skirmisher so he can keep up with the tempo. It's kind of like a similar idea. And then I use the uh, the riders get constant damage down and try. I'm trying to damage his Ekimar as much as possible so he has as little carryover as possible. Anyway, so he sees the sea weather. Uh, let's see. Oh, we're actually going on the same cards. I won the first round on the same card, so I guess that's good. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't really care about this game. I did save it at the very end of a, of a like two hour gameplay session, though, so it has to be at least OK. Anyway, so the last big change of this deck is like crones. Crones, you play one crone, you drag the other two out from your deck. Not only is it good deck thinning, uh, which is important, uh, you know, you play more cards, win, win more games kind of idea. But it also, uh, and I'm using this frost, just to, the, the whole game plan here kind of leads into crone, so we'll just go with that. So you pull the crones out, right? And it's also a 20 point play because it's eight plus six plus six. So it's a really strong one card play. And the kind of situations you use this in are, I think, arguably the two biggest ones. Uh, the, the single biggest one that I like using it for is uh, <clears throat> without getting into nuances of specific matchups. Um, cause there's a lot of them, but one particular use of using crones is to play it as soon as you go first in a round in the first round of the first match, uh, first round of the match rather, or you're, I didn't say that right. You're going first in the match of the first round. There we go. That's what I mean. Uh, you play it there, then you won't ever actually be passed on, uh, unfavorably. Then you can switch to using low tempo plays like using the wild hunt hound. So it's really useful for that. Uh, I kind of it doesn't flip the coin, but it effectively allows you to play as if the coin was flipped. If that makes any sense, you know, you, you're allowed to be more flexible with your tempo. If you play out crones first, as opposed to maybe playing cards a little bit later and maybe overkilling if they try and pass on you early. So it's just you avoid all the mess. You get the crones out. And at the very worst, you uh, have given yourself a little bit of wiggle room and you have thinned your deck out at the expense of uh, silver cards. Yes, that's true. But eh. Uh, the silver cards in this particular deck isn't all that um, uh, competitive anyway. You know, you have like the other card that like halves and locks and locks aren't all that useful. Having isn't all that useful right now. Anyway, 
<clears throat> and uh, so, and then the second the second way to use Crohn's is the situation you're seeing here. I, what I'm doing is I'm bleeding out my opponent to the very last card. I want to be my Crohn's against whatever he card, what card he has left in his hand. Now, a single Crohn's card uh, is like one of the the single best cards you could pop. One of the single best plays you could play in Gwent right now. Just that's incredibly high. 20 strength play off a single card is nigh unbeatable. Uh, you know, we're talking like uh, without combo assistance, rather, uh, or to specify, it's like it's nigh unbeatable in that aspect. So when you go into a, a round three situation like I'm trying to force right here and you're going into a round three situation with just crones, you're basically guaranteed to win. Also, you have the uh, you also have the option to push them and push them and push them in round two. And then if they maybe pass early or something like that, you can uh, if they try to do a hero pass, if they don't think you have enough points in your hand to overcome their point total, you can play out their crones because it's 20 strength packed into one single card, one play. And you uh, can effectively assume them uh, or stroop them rather. I've actually haven't had that happen to me a whole lot, but it could happen. And you see, I'm just like, I'm making sure to get as much weather, uh, playing as much, playing around my weather as much as possible. I have a, like the deck revolves around weather, like wild hunt weather into rider into another win condition in Iris. Iris is incredibly powerful. Uh, and the great thing about it is it, it'd be kind of unreliable if you had to rely on pulling it into weather or waiting until weather ticks enough. So the great thing is if you have a wild hunt rider on the field, it does three damage automatically and make sure not to have any units around it that will interfere. That's something you kind of got to get in the get in the hang of, but you, you'll get there once you play this deck enough. And this is a big, 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 big win condition. I played out. I get the three. Now you saying Kings agree. You only have four units. You got to play those crowns out. You got to play that Igni. That's true. But I was kind of thinking. Even though I'm losing five value here, I want to see if I can just pull out maybe like two more cards out of him here in this situation uh, in exchange for just the one Iris, even if it is a little bit weaker. Granted, I could have went for I could have went all in on crones and pulled, pulled Iris, but I wasn't entirely certain that that was going to work out at the very least i want to go into round three with just the crones and maybe i can just mulligan away the igni or something like that but still having the igni uh like my two to three cards is probably going to be whatever his two to three cards is even if he has does have a little bit more uh combo potential room so i get all those points he's still getting ticked on by weather and by this point i'm thinking huh Maybe I can just go for this. Maybe I can just like finish him off because weather's going to keep taking every turn. He has no answer for it. True, I'm not going to get an Igni, but at the very least I have, oh, and he plays his own Iris. Which is a little bit surprising. He doesn't have a whole lot of ways to, uh, to set it off, I don't think. So this is the big moment, right? Do I play Crones? Do I play Igni or do I just pass? Now think about it for a second what you would do considering the situation. Okay, that's enough time. Basically, the idea is uh, this is a totally okay passing situation, right? So they play out their card, whatever it is, to try and proc this Iris. Let's say uh, all in all, just from this, it's a... Uh, this overall play, let's just say it passes you, right? And that's totally fine. You got out a big combo, got out a big combo piece. You still have your crones. You can still mulligan away this Igni. Granted, this is a little bit risky because you could pull into another crone on accident. You could pull into all three of them, on a, like in worst case scenario. Uh, but at, the, at, at minimum, this is not terrible. Now, you could also go for the win. He's going to get 25 points off this. Minus two a little bit, and maybe you can get an Igni on this melee row. That's kind of risking it, and that's actually what I go for. I play out the crones. <laughs> uh, I think playing out Igni here also wouldn't necessarily be a terrible idea, uh, even if you don't get any get uh, any value, because you're not guaranteed value anywhere else. And just playing out the Igni gives you one more turn to buffer and to allow that weather to tick. And also, it does give you five points, right? Which could be the difference between him playing one more card or not. And Igni is more or less a wasted card anyway, because there's very little chance that I'm going to get value on it. I could pull into another crown, so I go for what I feel is a bit of a safer play. And by the way, that's a big, big problem with using crones into the round three, because you could accidentally draw into them, which would be really, really bad. And since you do so much deck thinning, it's a lot more likely. So there he goes. He lines. He actually manages to line this up. I, I would be surprised if these units are actually melee 
they're stuck to melee row. Are they stuck to melee row? Locked to melee row? Because if they weren't, he should have just placed it on the range row. But otherwise, I didn't really need it. <laughs> I can just get rid of his 24 points and just finish the bomb here. I saved my Igni for last. It wasn't really necessary. I took a bit of a risk there, but it did actually pay off this time. And even like in the worst case scenario where Igni doesn't actually get any value off, um, and I uh, and I just pass, I still have one card over him to mulligan away while he has to mulligan something else away. And I don't risk my crones being dead or wasted or whatever. Well, that's it. This is a new deck. I'm really enjoying it. I'll make sure specifically to leave it deck list this time but otherwise you'll just kind of come back to this video and look at it uh and get the description anyway thanks for watching